Greetings, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about analyzing real-time weather and maps. Now folks, a new activity based on ArcGIS Online invites students to analyze real-time weather data. I wrote this activity for university students, but upper secondary students with some GIS background could use it as well, particularly if beforehand they work through the How's the Weather Geo Inquiry to provide some key skills and geographic perspectives. Now using real-time weather feeds from NOAA, the activity asks students to note the relationships between pressure, temperature, wind speed, wind direction, proximity to coasts, latitude, and elevation. Students also create interpolated surfaces from the real-time weather station data, classify and symbolize data in a number of ways, and predict upcoming weather at specific locations. Now ArcGIS Online enables students to quickly and easily analyze spatial data such as this. Weather is an engaging topic, and the activity connects to mathematics, geography, earth science, and meteorology courses and curricula, and in the process fosters such skills in critical thinking, GIS, spatial analysis, and spatial data. Let's take a look at the activity. Here's the activity. I indicate the, the disciplines, the level, the time required, the tools used, prerequisites, etc. But it asks you to step through opening a live ArcGIS Online map and then ask, asking and answering a series of questions predicting the weather, changing, setting the lows and the highs as you can see right there, um, looking at uh, temperature and classifying and symbolizing that, then also doing the same thing with wind speed and direction, predicting the weather in two locations, observing the spatial pattern of wind speed versus pr direction versus t pressure, and then interpolating a, a temperature surface, then observing the spatial pattern of temperature, coasts, and elevation, comparing the predicted surface to the existing point data, and finally creating a pressure and wind speed interpolated surface, and then choosing a different state. Then writing your own question and answering that. It's interesting to note that the weather data, as you can see right here, when you open the map, it's basically this, and then you also look at the precipitation radar. But if you take a look at the any of these variables, for example, temperature, it is actually a gl global data set. So if we look at Western Europe, there are data points over there. Now if you go over to central Kazakhstan, there aren't that many data points. So it, it lends itself to global studies, but also a good teachable moment that if you don't have that many weather points, your interpolated surface is going to be, well, ask the students, is it going to be that uh, as valid as if you had a lot of points to interpolate the surface from? So you get a lot of this point data, but also you get uh, the opportunity to create symbolized and classified maps. So for example, current wind speed and direction, it takes all of 30 seconds to generate this map, for example, that shows the current wind speed and direction. And current is the thing, right? Because for years I taught this lesson with historical data from a certain snapshot in time. And that was good and I still will use that in the future, but being able to do this in real time is just it's just awesome, just awesome. Lends itself to so many discussions about, hey, what's it going to be like in the next 48 hours where you live based on the data that you're analyzing right here? So one of the things that they do is they filter out the states just to California. And then I ask them to choose another location after they, they run the analysis based on just California. Then they create a predicted surface, an interpolated surface for pressure, and then temperature, and then wind speed, if, they, if there's sufficient time. But they compare the pressure, interpolated surface, versus the actual pressure points, which you can see right here. So there's all kinds of, again, connections to many different disciplines and to some deep content knowledge, skills, some GIS skills that they're building in the process, and also geographic perspectives. How does proximity to coasts, highs and lows, frontal patterns, landforms influence current temperature, pressure, and then how does the wind speed interact with those two things? So all kinds of interesting things that you can do with this lesson. Enjoy. Let me know if you've got any comments and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.